In the Mix is presented by California Pizza Kitchen. Visit them today at the Holiday Resort Hotel. Off a day, welcome to In the Mix. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani. As Jordan's Art of Basketball, show your role is to jujitsu. The iconic brand got its start in a garage in California by a wayward teenager still trying to find his place in the world. Little did this 18-year-old boy know that his hobby would turn into a million-dollar company with jujitsu practitioners all across the globe sporting his brand. This is the rags to riches story of a Jordania boy who may have made it big, but remains humble and still hustling. I've heard of Show Your Roll, come on, who hasn't? But I'd never actually met the man behind the brand. So I messaged Bear, asked for an interview, and here I was walking into his pop-up studio in Timuning, where he was doing what he always does. Every time I come back, like I try to at least call him up and get together, you know, early. Everyone's busy with their schedules, but it's just kind of nice to be able to train with old friends, you know. We're talking friendships that span decades, the ogies, if you will. Most of the guys that come here and train in the morning, I, you know, we've been we've been training in some shape or form for like 20 years. And some friends that now own their own jiu-jitsu gyms, at least for a few hours on the 4th of July, Bear brought them together in the spirit of unity. You kind of see them all together in the, in the mat. Like, you could tell it's kind of like a little weird, you know, but <laughs> at the same time there's the energy. It was like, wow, it's, like, it's actually happening. Like, you know, you guys are actually able to like see each other, be in the same environment where it's not competitive, you know, and then actually be able to see, even some of you be able to roll together, you know, so that was kind of nice. And as I quickly learned, that's just the type of person Bear is. Sure, he's rolling in the dough, living that Cali life, but he's all about Guam. Born and raised in Jotnya and Ordot, life wasn't always easy. He spent a long time in Ordot growing up in a wooden tin shack, and he wasn't exactly your model student. Yeah, I just went to school at Tumuni Elementary, and then I went to Agata. I went to GW for a long period of my life. I couldn't focus on high school. Had a hard time graduating, you know, and then um, and then I ended up graduating from ECA my last year because I had a hard time graduating. I couldn't pay attention in school, you know, like I should have. Um, so wait, wait, what do you mean, like you said? Uh, I just, I just, I could never pay attention, and I never like, I never studied. I always made excuses, you know, like the teacher doesn't like me, you know, I'm gonna go hang out with my friends, I'm gonna write in textbooks, you know, like. I'm just gonna like basically not pay attention and like get bad grades because you know I think like I was dealing with whatever issues I had as a kid, you know, and like letting that be the reason why um, I didn't pay attention, you know, even though my parents told me like pay attention in school, you know, so um, so I struggled, you know, from sixth grade on to high till geez, even to like college, you know, um, but I found a way to kind of get through it, but at the same time I wasn't like straight A's or B student, I was like C and D. That was average, um, but then later on in life, I kind of figured out like she said I should have paid way more attention in school. After high school, Bear moved to California, started his Show Your Roll T-shirt company as a hobby, while attending college and eventually graduated with a degree in engineering. But he had a hard time finding a job in his field, so instead he focused his time and energy developing Show Your Roll. It was trial and error for several years. In all honesty, it probably we probably could have closed that at any given day, you know, for the first eight years because it wasn't making money. If anything, it was losing a lot of money, you know, so. And so then, when you're, I guess that first time, you're like, again, I don't know what I'm doing, why, <laughs> why am I doing this? What kept me coming? Uh, I think just friends, family, you know, they just kind of like, they give it hope, you know, just because um, they believe in it, you know, but, but then the person that's actually doing it, like you deal with the realities of it, and um, I think someone will try and push as long as they can. Sometimes I think even too long, you know, um, to where they have to like say, they call it quits and use it as a learning experience. You know, maybe go on to the next one. So I was like, I was right there. You know? I was like at the point where I like had to quit it and like use it as a learning experience and move on or something had to happen, you know. And for us, luckily enough, something happened with some time and then uh, we were able to get really good traction and then kind of like uh, focus on it and kind of channel it, turn it to uh, turn it into a viable business and company that can provide. What, what was the turning point? I think when we really started to like uh, evolve the kimono and the uniform in, in jiu-jitsu you know, back in like 07, uh, 08, 
I think once we started to really focus on trying to rebuild like an old uniform that was like kind of taboo for like exploring, just because martial arts is a very traditional uh, sport and culture. So for us, once we started to like look at the uniform and kind of like make it a little bit more stylish to what we wanted, then I think that kind of like um, gave us an edge because it wasn't really happening too much in the industry, it was brand new. So it gave us a, a little niche to focus on at the time for Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, so. so in the beginning, we wanted to be all these things. What are you? I'm a Guam company, I'm a surf company, I'm a skate company, I'm a Jiu Jitsu company. She's, I'll be, a, I'll be a reggae company, you know, even if you wanted me to. Because in the beginning, you don't really know, you don't know. <laughs> like I didn't go to school for this stuff and you're just kind of doing what you think is the best. So you're kind of all over the place, you know? Um, and then I think with time we kind of found out like who we were and what we were and what we needed to do. So, you know, it's like we're a jiu-jitsu company and our goal is to make the best uniforms on in the world. And that's our core, you know, and just at the bottom and at the heart of it, you know, I'm a Guam boy, I'm a local boy. And, That'll never change, you know, so it's deep in the root of the company. And Guam is deep in his heart. 80% of his staff at Show Your Roll are from Guam. He paid for their trip home for vacation. And what he says is a little bit of business, or rather using his company and its influence to promote the sport of jiu-jitsu, music, and art. Show Your Roll is flying in artists, musicians, and some of the world's best jiu-jitsu practitioners to hold several events locally. Some of them will be painting, you know, over the next couple of weeks, some of them will uh, be just enjoying the island and hanging out with their families. Some people will be here uh, to do jujitsu seminars, um, free open mats for for the for the island, and then um, and then also some will just be here um, because of the the craft beer festival. So um, on Friday the 13th, we'll be doing uh, show your own friends opening night at the Guam Museum, where it's just kind of like a meet and greet with all the people that, all the sponsors and the people that kind of helped make this, made this event possible. Um, and, and then Sunday, um, Saturday would be the open mat, the Jiu Jitsu event from 10 o'clock to two o'clock at the Guam Museum. Um, so that's a free open Jiu Jitsu mat and there'll be a little mini seminar in there with uh, Marcus Bouchesha, the top open weight in the world in Jiu Jitsu, Jazari Matuto, which is one of the best light female grapplers in the world and then also Gutenberg Pereira will be here and Lucas Lepri will be coming a little bit later as well um, and that's on Saturday at the Guam Museum and then Sunday would be uh, our um, our actual craft beer event uh, with music from Humble Soul, DJ Redmatic from Beat Junkies and a couple other local bands Four Piece, Big Ben and Kenya um, and that's on Sunday from 12 to 7. This is the first of its kind event Bears hosted on Guam, living up to his show your role model to create, influence, and inspire. We're using me music as a platform, you know, beer as a platform, Jiu Jitsu as a platform, um, and any other, any other medium that we can use as a platform to kind of spread a message, you know, and uh, you know, there's people that I've talked to over a long period of time that like think in a, a specific way that want to like address issues or stuff that we face locally as a as a culture on island you know and, but through a different way you know not just giving somebody a brochure saying hey learn about this you know because kids don't learn that way you know um, and it's it's been a long time coming you know I've been talking with friends about this stuff for a long time big John Calvo Mossy Tone Anderson you know um, and just so many, Brian Bamba, you know, like just all these guys that have been very interested in like these concepts before. Um, and now it's, we just wanna try and be able to showcase these things and our messages with some of these people um, and just bring awareness to things, you know, like activism and stuff with our culture that, you know, maybe dying, you know, stuff that we're kind of straying away from, uh, maybe stereotypes that we face as an island, you know, and just opening up our mind to like everything that used to be very weird. The weird kid on the side that we all used to tease, like he may be the next great thing, you know, and like he sees, he, he sees, sees things a different way and it doesn't make him wrong, you know. We shouldn't like push him to the side because he's different. For a man from humble beginnings on Guam to breaking barriers in the business world and now breaking stereotypes, how does he handle all the success? 
to keep on hustling, of course. It's one of those things where it's like, I think just because the kind of person I am, it's just really hard to enjoy the growth of things just because every day I think it's going to fall apart, you know? So um, my best work is only as good as yesterday. So I'm consistently striving, striving, striving to always try and keep it together, you know? So um, yeah, I think, with I think there comes some times where I'm like, wow, like, it's nice, but like, I'm like always the hardest on myself. So um, it's very hard to enjoy it when you have a personality like that. So for me, I always have to like slow it down, which is the hard part, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. It's just like, it's one of those things where it's like, you're supposed to be happy and you're supposed to be able to enjoy it, you know, and be able to look back. And um, for me, I think the more that, the more, change and impact we're able to make I think inside I start to feel better about that I thought when I was a kid that would make me excited and happy you know but now being in that place I know that like having more things or having a better house or a better car that's not really what excites me about running a company or running a business you know I think really the being able to change a culture and change an industry or change uh, perception of the way consumers consume or the way society and culture thinks. That's what kind of excites me in business. Thanks, Bear, for the interview, and thanks, CS in Agatnya, for hosting us for our interview. Also, if you want more information about the events that Bear is hosting, check out showyourworld.com and craftguam.com. Stay tuned, In the Mix continues after the break.